so let us look at the first question this is a very standard problem and you guys might have encountered it and would have identified it uh, right now because uh, this has been asked in a lot of competitive examinations a lot of olympiads and even in the test series that you guys might be a part of it has been asked uh, with different presentations uh, a lot so through this question for those of you who do not know the approach to solving such kind of questions through this question i am going to uh, expose you to a totally different approach of solving integrals and you have to pay very keen attention uh, to the approach that i am going to be using because it is going to be completely different from the kind uh, that you have been exposed to in your regular classes so let us begin with the question so firstly what i'm going to do is i am going to define a different function that is i uh, which is a function of alpha now i of alpha is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x ki power alpha minus 1 divided by ln of x dx now i want you to observe real closely this is this resembles the kind of question that uh, we have been given and essentially all we have to do right now is find i of 3 that means we have to replace alpha is equal to 3 and then we are going to be done so how are we going to do that so there is something else that i want you to observe which i'm going to use later in this video uh, when i put i uh, when i put alpha is equal to 0 in this equation i of 0 so actually i can compute i of 0 because when i put alpha is equal to 0 over here this whole term is going to be 0 uh, which is x ki power 0 which is going to be nothing but 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0 so the integral of 0 is also equal to 0 so this i of 0 is going to be 0 now you need to keep this in mind because we are going to use this somewhere in later in this uh, solution so what i need to do next what is the next step in this kind of approach so what i have to do is i have to differentiate it once now before i go ahead and proceed doing that i want to explain quickly two concepts first i want to remind you guys about a very general and basic formula that is the differentiation of a ki power x uh with respect to x that is the exponent is equal to a ki power x we write it we write it as it is and multiplied with ln of a that is we take the ln of the thing that is uh, below that is not in the exponents right so this is something that you need to keep in mind for the solution of this video and secondly i want to introduce you all to the concept of partial derivative now what is a partial derivative it is nothing but the differentiation of a function with respect to a certain parameter while treating all other parameters as constant for example i have a function in two variables for example uh, f of xy is equal to x square plus y uh, x square multiplied by y pardon me uh, so if i want to find the partial derivative now mind it the sign of the derivative is d dx but the sign of the partial derivative is uh, some strange type of d dx right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to find the partial derivative as an example uh, of f the partial derivative of f if with respect to x now what i'm going to do is i'm going to treat y as a constant so y is going to be outside the differentiation and then i'm going to differentiate x square which is going to be nothing but 2x so this is going to be the partial differentiation of f with respect to x now i can also partial differentiate with respect to y so what is going to be the partial derivative with respect to y i am going to uh, treat x square as a constant now and i am going to differentiate y which is nothing but 1 so this is the concept of partial derivative so now let us move on to the question so what i have done is i have copied the relevant information from the previous slide onto this one so what is going to be the next step from now 
uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate. I'm going to partial differentiate I with respect to alpha. Mind it, it's not going to be X. It's going to be alpha. And I'm going to treat X as a constant now. Now, this might not seem very intuitive at first, but after a lot of practice, you're going to understand because this is a very standard approach to attempting these kind of questions. So let us start. Uh, so just bear with me. Uh, slowly, it is going to start to make sense while I'm going to discuss some more examples. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find I dash I prime of alpha and I'm going to partial differentiate this whole integral. Now, mind it, the inter integral and the differentiation can uh, interchange its position. So it can go inside the integral uh, because we are differentiating under the integral sign. And uh, uh, this concept is valid as uh, 0 and 1. That are the lower limits and the upper limit. They are not a function of uh, x. Okay. So what I can do is uh, I prime of alpha is nothing uh, but the integral of the differentiation uh, that is the partial differentiation of this whole bad boy over here right uh, so in the next step what i can do is i can partial differentiate it so what is going to be the partial differentiation of this uh, so which is going to be uh, one of a, one upon ln x since this is a function of x uh, this is going to be treat uh, uh, taken as a constant so what i can write is one upon ln x multiplied by and uh, now x key power alpha what is going to be the differentiation of x key power alpha with respect to alpha now notice this is uh, don't make the mistake that this is going to be alpha multiplied by x raised key power alpha minus 1 that is going to be absolutely wrong because we are differentiating with respect to alpha so what the answer is going to be x key power alpha multiplied by ln of x now, this is uh, what I tried to remind you initially uh, in the first slide about the first concept. Uh, so, what we can see, we can slowly start to see the magic right here. Now, the ln x is going to cancel with the ln x over here. So, this is going to be a very easy integral to compute now. So, I'm just going to write it next that i prime of alpha is nothing but the integral from 0 to 1 of x key power alpha dx. Now, inside the integral, alpha can be taken as a constant. So, what I'm going to do is this is nothing but x key power alpha plus 1 divided by alpha plus 1. And the lower limit and the upper limit are going to be from 0 to 1. Now, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, we can easily say that this is equal to 1 upon alpha plus 1. So, therefore, I conclude, let me write it down over here, that i prime of alpha is nothing but 1 upon alpha plus 1 right so what i'm going to do now now i'm going to use this information and also what i computed uh, what i found out what i observed basically be, uh, before was that i of 0 is 0 so what i can do is i can just uh, because i don't have any use of i prime of alpha i want to find i of alpha what i can do is i can integrate i prime of alpha uh, which is going to be the integral of 1 upon alpha plus 1. So basically what I can say now is once I integrate this whole thing over here uh, the integral of i prime of alpha is going to be nothing but i of alpha is going to be ln of alpha plus 1 plus c. Now I have to introduce this constant of integration because I haven't chosen any limits in this integral, right? So, how do I find this c? Once I find this c, I can find i as a function of alpha and therefore I can find i of 3. Uh, so, what I can use now is i of 0 is equal to 0. So, I replace alpha is equal to 0 and I get i of 0 is equal to 0 is nothing but when I put alpha is equal to 0, I get ln 1 which is 0 plus c. 0 plus c which implies that c is equal to 0. Now I can conclude that i of alpha is nothing but ln of alpha plus 1. Therefore the job has been done. Now notice the initial question was that we had to find i of 3. Right. 
so when i put alpha is equal to 3 i get i of 3 is equal to ln 4 and that is the required answer for this question so this was a different approach from the conventional uh, uh, substitution the partial fractions or the integration by parts and there's something that you need to keep in your mind because some kind of questions can be asked in the future given the level of the JE mains as well as the JE advanced and slowly how in mathematics they are slowly incrementing the level of the paper. So that was the first question. Let's move on to the next question.